Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and in this video we're going to take a look at AP Chemistry Unit 8, Section 4, which is all about the reaction of acids with bases. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and consider clicking that subscribe button. That way you'll have instant access to all of my 100 plus AP Chemistry daily videos, as well as AP review videos, problem walkthroughs, all kinds of good stuff. Let's go ahead and jump into what happens when a strong acid reacts with a strong base. Now, this is a very common uh, type of question that's asked on AP Chemistry or in general chemistry courses. And this might be a very typical example of that. Solutions of hydrochloric acid and potassium hydroxide are mixed together. Well, anytime you have a strong acid reacting with a strong base, the net ionic reaction is always the same. And this is something that we mentioned way back in Unit 4, but this is certainly worth repeating. H plus aqueous plus hydroxide aqueous yields water liquid. That's the net ionic reaction for any strong acid and strong base. Everything else that's there is going to be a spectator ion. So in this case, that would be your, your potassium ions, your chloride ions. Those are going to be spectators in this process. So let's try an example with this. A student adds 150 milliliters of 0 0.500 molar nitric acid to 300 milliliters of 0 0.300 molar sodium hydroxide. It asks us to give the net ionic equation, the spectator ions present after the reaction is over, and to calculate the pH of the resulting mixture. So for part A, the net ionic equation, well, we just have to recognize that there's a strong acid being mixed with a strong base, which means the net ionic equation has to be this right here, H plus plus OH negative equals or yields water. And the spectator ions would be all the other ions that are there that aren't part of that net ionic equation. So that would be sodium and the nitrate. Those are your spectator ions. Now, the harder part of this is part C. We're going to calculate the pH of the resulting mixture. I would strongly recommend that you calculate the moles of the H plus and OH minus that are reacting and result from this reaction using a mole ice box. Now, we've used ice boxes to work equilibrium problems. This is not really an equilibrium problem, but I think an ice box, if we just use moles instead of molarity, actually uh, can save us some time over doing stoichiometry and actually doing all the steps in the stoichiometry. So let's start with finding out how many moles of H plus we have initially. Now the H plus, of course, is coming from the strong acid, and it's 150 milliliters of 0.5 molar. So to find the moles of the H plus, we just have to take the 0.15 liters times 0.5 molar like we see here. So that gives us 0.075 moles of H plus. That's going to go in this initial spot right down here. Next we have moles of hydroxide. I see that's 300 milliliters of 0.3 molar hydroxide. So to find the moles, I just multiply those two numbers by each other, 0.3 liters times 0.3 molar. So that gives me 0.09 moles of hydroxide. Now, there's a lot of water here. This is an aqueous solution. We're not really concerned with how much water is made over the course of this process. So we're just gonna kind of ignore the water here in this, uh, in this scenario anyway. So what we want to do is notice which one of these two items is going to run out. Well, we have less H+, plus, so it's going to run out first. So in our change row, this side will go down by 0.075. Since it's the limiting reactant, it, it, it runs out first. The hydroxide also goes down by 0.075, leaving us with zero moles of H+. Plus, but when you subtract this, we're left with 0.015 moles of hydroxide. And we have to reason that since there's excess hydroxide, the resulting solution, when you mix these two things together, will be basic. It's going to have a pH greater than 7. Well, let's find out what that pH is. So we had 
0.015 moles of hydroxide, we have to find out the molarity of that. So we divide it by liters. And the liters will essentially be the sum of the two uh, mixtures that were added together. So we had over here, we had 150 mils. And over here, there are 300 mils. So that's 450 mils total. So that's why we have to divide this by 0 0.450 liters to get the molarity. So when you divide that, hopefully you see where that number came from. It's just the sum of the two volumes. And when you divide it out, it's 0 0.0333 moles per liter hydroxide. Now, if we know the concentration of hydroxide, then if we take the negative log of that, that's going to give us the pOH. So that's 1.48. And if you know the pOH, then the pH is pretty easy, isn't it? Just subtract that from 14, and you'll find that the pH is 12.52. So that's how you solve a pH problem like this. Let's try another one. There's a lot going on here, so it's worth doing another problem. This one says, a student adds 290 milliliters of 0.200 molar HBr, hydrobromic acid, to 185 milliliters of 0 0.150 molar barium hydroxide, BaOH2. And once again, it asks us for the same three things as we had in the last problem. So the first part, the net ionic equation is pretty straightforward. Since it's a strong acid being added to a strong base, it's just the same as it was before. H plus plus OH minus yields water. Now, by the way, if you write this as H3O plus plus hydroxide yields two water molecules, that's fine. But this is how this is how most people actually write this uh, in, in chemistry. But if you write it as H3O plus, that's okay too. Now, once again, the spectator ions are the ions that aren't doing anything. So that would be the barium in the base and the bromide from the acid. So those, those are the spectators. Now, this, this leaves us with part C once again, calculating the pH. So we're going to use the ice box just like we did before. This time it's with moles, though, instead of a molarity. So the moles of hydrogen ions, well, we multiply 0 0.290 liters times the 0 0.2 molar HBr. And when you multiply those out, you find that the moles will be 0 0.0580 moles of hydrogen ions. To find the moles of hydroxide, we have to multiply 0.185 liters times 0 0.150 molar times 2. Now, you see that there's a times 2 here. Do you see why it has to be multiplied by 2? Well, this has 2 hydroxides in it. So it's, it's essentially a 2 to 1 ratio. We have to account for that. So when you multiply that out, we get 0 0.0555 moles of hydroxide. On a problem like this, that is honestly the, probably the most common mistake. Students forgetting to multiply by 2 because this is one of those strong bases that has two hydroxides in it, like calcium hydroxide or strontium hydroxide. It has a two. Now, as we look at these two values, we can see that it looks like the hydroxide is the smaller value this time. So that's the one that's going to run out first. Hydroxide is our limiting reactant. And so that means that we're going to have zero moles of hydroxide. But when you subtract the H plus values, we find that we have 0 0.0025 moles of hydrogen ions. And it, that means that since we have excess hydrogen ions, this is going to be not basic like in the last problem. This is going to be an acidic uh, resulting solution. So we're going to take the 0 0.0025 moles of H plus that we just calculated, and we're going to divide that by the total volume. Now, do you see where the 0.475 liters come from this time? We had 290 milliliters, and we added that to 185 milliliters. So the total volume, when you add these two together, gets you 475 milliliters, or that's our 0.475 Liter. So when you divide that out, that's 0 0.0053 molar.
And if you know the H plus concentration, then to find the pH, you just take the negative log of that H plus concentration, just like we learned earlier on in, in section one of this unit. And so that's 2.28. And so that's all you have to do for a strong acid, strong base problem. Now that's, that's the most common type, to be completely honest, but you'll also sometimes have cases where you have a weak acid reacting with a strong base. This is a, a fairly common type. In fact, we'll talk more about this in the next uh, section, section five, about acid-base titrations. And if you have a weak acid reacting with a strong base, the net ionic equation is going to look something like this, where HA is the formula of your weak acid. Of course, hydroxide, that's what's reacting out of the strong base. The water is a product. And this A minus here represents the conjugate base of the weak acid. So basically it's just whatever the weak acid was starting with, with an H plus taken away from it. So that's the, that's the template for writing the net ionic equation for a weak acid strong base problem. Now, usually what's gonna happen in these problems is most likely you'll have a certain amount of acid and you'll have fewer moles of hydroxide then you have moles of the weak acid. And so that means that all of the hydroxide reacts, and what you're left with is a mixture of the weak acid, this HA, and the conjugate base, the A minus. So whenever you have a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base, we call that a buffer. And that's an important term to know, a mixture of a weak acid and its conjugate base. We'll talk more about buffers toward the end of Unit 8. It's a very uh, important concept, something that's, that's actually used quite a bit in, in, uh, in chemistry. So that's weak acid strong base. Now, you could have another type of problem where a strong acid reacts with a weak base. Now, this, this, this type is not quite as common in AP chemistry, but every, but every now and then it does pop up. If that happens, this is the basic uh, template for that type of equation. In this case, the strong acid, I'm using the H3O plus, the, the hydronium, to act as the strong acid. That's aqueous, of course. The weak base is just the B, and that's aqueous. And the products are HB plus, now that represents the conjugate acid of the weak base, because this is the weak base. The conjugate acid is just adding on an H plus to that base, essentially. And of course, water is uh, produced as well. So this is the template for writing a strong acid weak base reaction. Now, once again, most of the time, if you see a problem like this, you're gonna have acid and of course the weak base, and you're probably not gonna have enough strong acid to react with all of the weak base. And if that happens, that means that what you're gonna have is all of the hydronium reacting, and so it's all essentially gone, and you have a mixture of the weak base and its conjugate acid, the B and the HB plus. Well, that is also a buffer. Anytime you have a weak base and its conjugate acid, or weak acid and its conjugate base, that is a buffer. And you probably know a few things about buffers already from perhaps earlier science classes. Uh, buffers are solutions that resist changes to pH. So that means you can add some acid or base to it and its pH is not gonna change very much. Now your blood has a very important buffer in it. So your, your blood maintains a fairly constant pH. We'll talk more about buffers later on in unit eight, like I said earlier. Now let's take a look at a couple questions about the strength of acids and bases. This one says the dissociation of cyanic acid is given below. Which of the two bases is stronger, the CNO negative ion or the water molecule? Explain your answer. Now the key part here to recognize is that this Ka is a fairly small number, 3.5 times 10 to the negative fourth. That means that this reaction does not proceed forward in any appreciable amount. 
Uh, since the value for Ka is relatively small, that means that this equilibrium lies far to the left. You're going to have a whole lot more reactants than products. So what that means is that this CnO negative is very effective at accepting protons. And we know that because we have a whole lot of HCnO. The CnO negative has accepted lots and lots of protons, evidently. Whereas water is not accepting a whole lot of protons. We know that because you don't have a whole lot of CNO negative produced. This is a, a two-way competing process. We have a, a forward process that is not pr uh, proceeding very much, but we have a reverse process that is proceeding quite a bit. So in a, a weak acid situation, we'd say that its conjugate base is very good very strong, I should say, at accepting protons. It's a stronger base than the water is. Let's look at another example, which is a, is a stronger base in this example. Uh, water or the nitrate ion, and explain your answer. Well, the uh, giveaway on this one is that we're dealing with a strong acid dissociation on this one. There really is no Ka, because notice there's a single-headed arrow. That means that this reaction essentially proceeds to completion. So when that's the case, notice that water is a very good base because it is accepting every single one of the protons that nitric acid can throw at it. It is an excellent base in this example, whereas nitrate is a pathetic base. It's not really acting as a very good base at all. And that's because it, it can't accept any of these protons that hydronium might be throwing at it. And you see that that's essentially what the explanation is saying here. Uh, water accepts protons very well. Uh, nitrate is very ineffective. So water is the stronger base. So the takeaway from this is that when a strong acid is reacting with water, well, water is an excellent base in this example. I hope this video has helped you to learn something about how strong acids and strong bases and weak acids and, and, and strong bases and, 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 other, and, and that other types, strong acids and weak bases uh, react. Uh, sometimes it's hard to keep it all straight in my head, but hope you uh, learned something from this. If you did, please smash that thumbs up button, smash the like button, and I hope to see you in the next video where we are going to jump right in to talking about acid-based titrations in Unit 8, Section 5. Hope to see you then.